Hi everyone, this is Atik. I welcome all of you to my channel Engineering Drive. Today I am going to discuss one important concept of operating systems. And I am not wrong in saying that this is the heart of operating system. Without this concept, concept there is no operating system. If you have studied all the concepts of operating system and if you have missed scheduling algorithms, then I will say that you have you you have nil knowledge of operating systems. Okay, and many students have given comments also in my recent videos of operating system. Sir, when you are going to upload the scheduling algorithms concept, you know I am going in a proper manner here, in a proper way, which means the student who is having zero knowledge on operating systems also should able to understand what is operating system then what are the types of operating system then i discussed what is deadlock then what are the conditions for a deadlock to occur this is a sequence way i am going here okay now i am going to start the scheduling algorithms now okay in my today's video i will be showing you the importance of scheduling algorithms why there is a need of scheduling algorithm for an operating system and what is the importance of scheduling algorithm and what are the types of scheduling algorithms our operating system supports and from next set of videos i am going to discuss each and every algorithm for you in detail with a problematic example because in finally in exams in competitive exams they won't ask theory here more than theory you will get problems and the topic that i am going to discuss in my today's video if you listen and understand well then only you can able to understand the remaining scheduling algorithms in the next set of videos so hopefully pay full attention and listen the important words that are, that i am going to speak about in my today's topic okay now what is the main purpose of scheduling algorithm why our operating system uses scheduling what is mean by scheduling first of all you know scheduling in the sense is nothing but a timetable we know what is the use of timetable if we follow anything according to timetable then the work will be completed in a proper manner similarly our operating system also what it will do you know you need to understand three things in order to understand the scheduling algorithms what are those three things means there is a cpu okay our processor who will execute all our programs or processes and there will be processes p1 p2 and p3 okay cpu can select p1 for execution cpu can select p2 for execution cpu can select process p3 for execution okay now it is not the command or it is not the order of cpu based on that p1 p2 p3 will be executed who need to take decision whether p1 should be executed by cpu p2 should be executed by cpu or p3 should be executed by cpu it is the operating system which is going to take the decision okay which means here the the, the entity that will do the entire work is cpu only 100% correct cpu only but in order to make cpu work cpu will wait for the commands who will give that commands who is the boss for the cpu operating system okay hopefully it has been cleared so there are three things that will play drama here in our computer drama in the sense the overall work one is our cpu who will do that entire work next are the processes who which needs to be executed and who will assign which process should be executed to cpu it is the work of operating system now operating system might select p1 for execution operating system might select p2 for execution or operating system might select p3 for execution we call this one as scheduling what we call this one scheduling scheduling means assigning the correct process at the correct time to the cpu for execution depending on some criteria we call this one as scheduling and there are many scheduling algorithms that our operating system supports and why there is a need of scheduling without scheduling also our cpu can do the work then why operating system will interfere okay why operating system will allot and take the decision to allot p1 p2 p3 to cpu in a proper manner based on some scheduling techniques what is the reason the reason is this six answers for you okay why scheduling is very very important why operating system support scheduling because of this six advantages what are those six advantages let us see the first advantage of using scheduling algorithm is 
you will get maximum cpu utilization you know what is the meaning of maximum cpu utilization cpu is there to service service to processes let us say only p1 has been executed p2 and p3 are ideal they are not interested for execution now at that time cpu will be simply ideal it won't do any work so at that time what happened if operating system use a scheduling algorithm operating system will assign other processes to cpu so that cpu should not be ideal so the first reason that we can use scheduling algorithm is to make use of our cpu in a proper manner without keeping our cpu ideal if we want to utilize our cpu properly maximum cpu utilization then we can use our scheduling algorithm this is very very important okay that is the first advantage and the second advantage why scheduling algorithm is preferred is fair allocation of cpu what is mean by fair allocation fair allocation means if p1 got the chance for execution sometimes p2 and p3 may not get the chance for execution they will be simply waiting okay at that time we want to remove them from waiting state how we can remove them from waiting state if we use proper scheduling algorithm then what happened p1 p2 and p3 they will get fair allocation they will get equal chance for execution that is the second advantage of using scheduling algorithms fair allocation of cpu okay and the third important advantage of uh, scheduling algorithm is maximum throughput what is meant by maximum throughput maximum throughput means in less amount of time more work will be done okay if we use proper scheduling algorithm then the required number of process will be executed by cpu in a very limited amount of time less time more work that is known as maximum throughput we will get with the amount of work that can be completed is more if we use scheduling algorithms and the fourth advantage is minimum tat what is tat here turn around time all these words will be using in our scheduling algorithm that's why you understand carefully this. so that okay in problematic way i will be explaining you with the help of simple examples in my next videos where i will be starting all the scheduling algorithms so be careful with this words my dear students minimum turn around time minimum turn around time means the amount of time taken by our cpu to execute a particular process well, let us say for p1 how much time within that time only our cpu has executed that time also should be minimum if the time is minimum then we can our cpu can execute more number of processes this this time also will be minimum if we use scheduling algorithm if the time will become maximum what happened very less number of processes will be executed okay but we want more number of processes to be executed that's why we will we will get minimum turnaround time in very less amount of time the work will be completed and the fifth advantage and the purpose of using scheduling algorithm is minimum waiting time which means if p1 got the chance for execution by cpu then p2 and p3 there is no need for them for to wait for a long period of time immediately p2 and p3 will also get the chance so their waiting time will be considerably reduced if we use a scheduling algorithm this is the fifth major advantage and the last advantage is is related to fifth one itself what is that minimum response time what is response response means let us say p1 is currently being executed by cpu then within how many seconds or milliseconds p2 will get the response response means when p2 will get the chance for execution so that time also should be minimum okay if we use a proper scheduling algorithm hopefully it has been clear to you so if you want to make if you want to have this six advantages then we need to use a proper scheduling algorithm okay so for this reason from my next set of videos i am going to start the all the algorithms of my operating system which have been supported okay and there are four major algorithms that i am going to discuss from the next set of videos the first algorithm that i am going to start is the name of the algorithm is fcfs first come first serve algorithm how this scheduling algorithm will work so we will dis i have already discussed an overview why we will use this scheduling algorithms from the next set of videos i will be starting with separate videos on every algorithm so fcfs first come first serve algorithm and next second algorithm that i am going to discuss is round robin algorithm and the third algorithm that i am going to discuss is sjf shortest job first algorithm 
and the fourth algorithm that I am going to discuss in my video is priority algorithm. Okay, so these are the four major algorithms that I am going to discuss in my next, next set of videos. In every video, only one algorithm I am going to concentrate with one example problem. Okay, so this is very, very, very important topic. Hopefully, you can understand it very easily. Many people are in a confused state with the scheduling algorithms. But hopefully, my purpose of my channel is to make you something learned in a simple way. Okay, and try to share my channel link to all your friends and relatives who are in need of subject in a simple way okay so that it can be helpful for the degrees or even in competitive exams okay so let me see you in my next video of fcfs scheduling algorithm okay with this let me close my today's session of video see you soon take care love is